This is Pee from A to C. Pattern of Exile is well known for having a ton of active skill chips. However, how many of them are actually viable? I will try to conquer Path of Exile one skill at a time. The ultimate goal? Beating a pinnacle boss in solo self -up. Meaning no trading, no handouts. And with that, let's begin. Welcome back, Exiles. Today, I will start mapping with the arc character that I leveled up earlier. So before I begin on mapping, let me just quickly summarize the character that I have for now. The character is at level 70, with close to all of the elemental resistances kept, so I need to fix that before mapping. Additionally, I have about minus 24% chaos resistance, which would be nice to fix. So let's take a quick summary of the skills that I'm currently using. I'm using Arc, linked to Spell Echo, Lightning Penetration and Inspiration. Galvanic Field, linked to Elemental Focus, Lightning Penetration and Inspiration. For Movement Skill, I use Lightning Warp, linked to Lesturation and want to suck it in Swift Affliction to get more of the less duration on the skill. I have Wave of Conviction to inflict elemental exposure, in addition to Conductivity to help reduce the enemy's lightning resistance. I've also added a Lightning Golem, which grants me some extra cast speed. The first thing that I need to fix is to get some good gear upgrades. I would also like to get some more damage, so some of the modifiers I'm looking for on gear is increased spell damage, Increased lightning damage, cast speed, plus two spell skill gems or plus two lightning spell skill gems as the gem scales well with levels. Increased effect of non damaging ailments to increase our shock, and some increased critical strike chance. We don't need a lot since I've specced into elemental overload, but I need some crit chance to proc it consistently. So getting a diamond flask is also really nice. Getting some strength on gear will also help as we're spec into iron will. Since I'm rushing towards the pinnacle boss, it is highly unlikely, but getting a cluster jewel with increased lightning damage and crafting on overshock will also help out with the damage a lot. The arc skill in itself seemed to excel on being a pretty fast mapper but struggles a bit when it comes to single target damage. So getting some gear upgrades would help out a ton. To get the best damage, a well-rolled staff would probably be the best. In terms of defenses, I'm using the Bastion of Elements, which help reduce elemental damage taken, and by equipping more armor pieces, I will be able to mitigate some more physical damage. To get even better defenses, getting some percentage of physical damage taken as elemental damage would also help out a ton. Personally, I don't like having this as my only defenses, so instead of going the max DPS route, I will keep a wand and a shield so I can spec into some block chance for both attack and spell damage in hopes to get a little tankier. In terms of the mapping plan, I will spec into essences in hopes of looting essences of woe, which at the highest tier, the Deafening Essence of Woe, can secure between 83 to 94% spell damage on one-handed weapons. Other than that, I'll do as usual and farm Val side areas in hopes of getting a 5 or a 6 link. In the future, I want to change this up a little bit using other gameplay mechanics, but due to the time limit of Crucible ending very soon, I'll stick to the tried and true method that has worked for me in the past. The same goes with the pinnacle boss, I'll just do the first I get the quest for due to the limited time. With all of that said, let's get to mapping. The progression through maps was as I usually do, by starting to complete all of my tier 1 maps and thereafter push to the highest map possible that I have available. After pushing the first few maps, I died a couple of times, so this might be just my inability to play spellcasters. So the first thing I wanted to try and fix was my defenses. 
I started specking into block notes on the passive skill tree, which will give me some more defenses and help out with the elemental resistances. Additionally, I bought and equipped Tempest Shield. This will give us some spell block chance and also immunity to shock and occasionally some damage. During early white maps, I also looted a pretty nice shield. This gives me most of what I'm looking for, increased lightning damage, high amounts of life, life regen, and extra chance to block. The only downside is that it is not an armor base. Other than that, this was pretty good. Shortly after, I started farming all of the Val side areas that showed up in hopes of getting the Val arc skill or more links on my gear. <laughs> no shot <laughs> and enlighten. I don't think I'll ever be able to equip and use it as it needs so much XP to level up. But, <laughs> but I'll take it, I'll take it. I used up all of my sacrifice fragments and went back to mapping instead. No shot. <laughs> a 5 league is just a general drop in a white tier map. <laughs> At least it's pretty good. <laughs> Finally, okay, I'll get some more damage. I'll get some more damage now. After some chromatic orbs, I finally ha had a 5 link that I could use. I threw an Essence of Rage on it, which secures me so some strength on the item. And with some luck, I managed to get high amounts of life and some resistances as well. As the next support link, I added added lightning damage support. So the arc links was now arc linked to added lightning damage, lightning penetration, spell echo, and inspiration support. I also crafted some percentage armor on the body armor to get some more defenses. Shortly after, I also looted a decent wand that I could use. I would love to have had a lot more spell damage on it, but it works for now. It had some decent spell damage, good cast speed, and I crafted on some flat lightning damage to spells. The critical strike multiplier on it does nothing for me as I'm specced into elemental overload. Now I felt that the build started to get ready for yellow maps, so I started pushing towards that. At this point, mapping felt really smooth. Some rare mobs would still take a long time to kill, but other than that, the build felt smooth. During early yellow tier maps, I also looted an unveiled ring from the Syndicate. I was pretty lucky and got reduced mana cost of skills, so I crafted that one onto one of my rings, as I'm a little starved on mana. Shortly after, I hit level 80 during yellow maps, and had the following passive skill tree. Thereafter, I finally got the Eater of Worlds questline and could start to push towards higher tier yellow maps. During yellow maps, I also got a pretty cool drop. Oh, <laughs> a red blade battery? Oh, that's pretty cool. I don't need it on this character, but it's a pretty cool shield. Shortly after, it was time for the Eternal Labyrinth. For the last two ascendancy points, I went with Shaper of Winter. This will help apply chill to our enemies, reducing their action speed, which is a good defensive option. Additionally, if I were to get a 6 link, I could put in Hypothermia as a support to my arc, which will help us freeze enemies, but also do more damage if the enemies are chilled. Thereafter, I started pushing into red tier maps, and shortly after looted the invitation to fight the infinite hunger miniboss.
the gear and the build was currently doing okay in low tier red maps but if i would have the time i would have farmed out better gear into mid to high tier yellow maps before pushing on through in a tier 13 map i was met with an ultimatum i looted the agnarod west staff wait okay Hmm, this one I can use, but then I have to change it up. Hmm. By equipping the staff, I would increase my damage by around 20%. And as I started to run out of time, as Crucible was ending just around the corner, I decided to remove some of my defensive layers and use the Agnorod West staff for more damage. If I would have had better time, I would have continued with the wand and a shield and crafted some better gear while pushing into red tier maps. So I removed the skill points on the tree that are connected to me using a shield and did put it into more damage instead. And I also removed the Tempest shield skill. So with the new stuff in hand, I pushed through the last tiers. I'll admit my defenses were awful and I died a whole bunch pushing the last tier of red maps. After the push, I was finally awarded with the Eater of Worlds invitation. At this point, the character had been played for around 16 hours. So to compare it to the animate weapon build, I had farmed for about 22 hours at the same stage. So I believe having 6 more hours of farming would have made quite a difference, both in terms of my damage and my defenses. So if I would have had better time, I would have tried to get better equipment, giving me better damage and defenses. But the invitation is secured. And then there's only one thing left to do. And that is to finish off the pinnacle boss. Until then, stay safe, exiles.